this is a, uh, a slide that uh, shows whole water uh, up here as a green. Um, and it is a, uh, our architect did this and it shows all the various elevations in it. You can't see them because they're fine dry, but uh, this is what is proposed. The first, this is our current uh, catch basin, this uh, little red dot here. You have one. Well, it's recommended we add five and drain it off, uh, drain uh, wastewater off into the preserve. There are some undulations and elevations here which would help get drainage on both sides of the course. The second thing would be to take this about the 30 foot area that exists here and make it a rough area, take the bulge out here and run the cart path closer to the preserve line. So that's the proposed uh, improvements to uh, hole one. Uh, let's go to the next slide. This is existing uh, 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 hole three. This is where the bunker was uh, at one time. Now it is a waste area. Uh, you know, long ball hitters uh, can get normally up here, depending upon what tee box you're on. You normally hear there is an edge here, but you tend to get a lot of unfair roll that's hitting here, or you're getting a bounce there, and you find yourself in this area. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, to improve drainage, add uh, three catch basins. Uh, take the midway, uh, the mid fairway waste uh, area, uh, convert it to rough, and again add some general rules to improve playability. And this is the architect's drawing. You would add three catch basins here. This tends to be a wet area in the rainy season. Uh, the Waste area here would be filled in, that would become part of the rough. Some of it may be fairway, some of it may be rough. But that basically is, and you would add some rolls over here. Because these tend to be at landing areas. It's not making the course easier, it's making the course perhaps more correct. And uh, so that is the proposed uh, improvements for uh, a whole three. Three, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, I, I must uh, admit that these are proposed, uh, which means I have to go hat in hand to the board and beg for some money to do it. But they're not gigantic uh, improvements. Uh, they probably are in the area of fifty to sixty thousand dollars. But one has to be realistic. There's a lot of demands on capital this year. You've got a very major project going on uh, across the street here. This is a minor project. Uh, perhaps we can't do both, uh, but we're going to fight very much at least to do one. If we only could do one, it uh, would be a whole one. Because I'm tired of going into the preserve. <laughs> <laughs> I do find a lot of golf balls while I'm in here. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the last page here, or next to the last. Yeah. This is a, a list of some of the activities that the uh, Green Committee will be focusing on, and, and that is to complete the master plan. And, and we're almost there. We have a lot of data. Uh, we have one more gyration to go through, uh, but this is something that has been uh, a two-year project. Uh, we've made good progress, uh, and uh, we have almost all the information to start laying it out in a logical form to say, here is a plan, which the next Green Committee uh, will say, well, that's nice, but we'll do our own, perhaps. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we have looked at the course perhaps a little differently, and uh, I do think that we have a better picture of what we want to do as compared to what we will uh, need to do. Uh, we're also going to uh, 
look to uh, saw our approaches uh, to the greens with the diamond zoysia. Uh, we'll continue our tea renovation program. We have about six tea boxes to go, and that's uh, expanding them or aligning them more uh, uh, properly, uh, as well as uh, regressing. And uh, we will continue to work on our poor rough areas with the uh, celebration grass and as well as institute a top dressing program. So that's the activity over the, uh, in the, the coming months. And uh, I'll take any questions and hopefully give you some answers. Two in the back, go ahead. Uh, we have a, a number of new silver teas that are well, then you have the group on the other end of this uh, room that say, uh, uh, we're talking about silver teas on the height of them. Um, no, they're not going to be raised. Uh, they were designed to be uh, level or just slightly below grade level. They are not to uh, interfere with the tea, uh, the teas uh, in back of them. So what you see is what you get in terms of uh, the silver teas. However, they were, are marked uh, along the cart path by a, a marker, a white and green marker, so that uh, which are adjusted on a daily basis whenever the tea, uh, the teas are uh, moved back or forward uh, in order to compensate for wear. There's another question somewhere back there. Yes, sir. Uh, word of caution, when yours raining, you're raining, we're putting in potentially five drains. And you mentioned that the, the water, the excess water, would be going into the preserve. Is that correct? Correct. And has our uh, golf course architect um, considered the excess water as potentially killing the trees in the preserve? Um, the water level in the preserves are currently monitored, if I'm correct, Jimmy, on that? Yes, we have, uh, what, monitoring wells in there? Staff gauges also. Yeah, and pardon me? Staff gauges also. Okay, so the, the preserve, in our opinion, and our <coughs> architect has looked at it, can, you're not talking about uh, opening up our rearranging a river here, we're talking about drainage. And uh, the amount, it depends obviously on the amount of rain you get at any particular time, but it should not add a significant amount of water to the preserve area. Uh, they, our water levels, uh, depending upon the time of the year, which are measured, uh, uh, do fluctuate greatly. Obviously during the summer months, uh, they're, they're way down. And that's a, a time when you get a fair amount of rain, so maybe it's a good thing that's going into the preserve. All the water goes somewhere when it rains. Uh, currently, though, uh, what we're looking to avoid or to correct are the puddling, the puddling aspects on uh, the two holes. I don't know if that fully answers your question. Well, if it's being considered, you covered it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Ward, you had a, uh, a question? Thank you. Uh, in the back there. Yeah. Instead of regrassing or grassing the uh, waste bunker, did you ever consider just establishing it as a legitimate fairway bunker? Uh, yes, we did. Um, in order to put a bunker in today, it's frightfully expensive. You just don't dig a hole and throw sand in there. Uh, you, the, the amount of work, a, a bunker will run you fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 at, at minimum. What you do. So it really was a cost factor and uh, I don't know, we sort of like the idea of more fairway and more rough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and specifically on the first hole, the first hole should be I got off to a good start. <laughs> the average handicap uh, for men uh, at Eagle Creek is 18.8. The average handicap for women is 28.9.
and it hasn't moved in five years. So that is part of the consideration of saying, what is it you do? How challenging do you want to make the course? Uh, we have eight women with handicaps under 10. We have 10 men with handicaps under 10. So, um, you know, for the average stuffer like myself, I want to get off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, have you thought about doing anything to number two? Well, uh, you know, I, I, other than regress it, uh, Tom, uh, no. Uh, you, you're talking about the right side of number two or the left side? The left side. Uh, the left side. Well, you thought we moved the condominiums back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but this is part of the master plan where you sit down hole by hole by hole. The reason why one on three is coming up at this time, it's a good opportunity to do it when you have the course shut. Uh, you can get this done. And uh, you know, if it's not going to cost a zillion dollars, um, the hope is we can get it done. Yes, sir. When will the course actually be shut down? Uh, June 15th, that, that week. You know, 13th, 15th, around right there. And the course, now the course will be shut down from then to start uh, roughly 16 weeks. The growing period for the uh, celebration is 8 to 10 weeks. So the course will be shut down from June 15th to what? October. Yeah, yeah, early October. Either the 8th or the 15th, depending upon uh, Mother Nature and Mr. Ralston and his fine staff. Cooperate. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Since you talk about this being uh, the cheapest way of doing it, uh, is this a temporary measure? Is no, no. Uh, the, the, the issue, uh, the question is uh, is this a temporary fix as compared to doing something else? The original strategy was to proceed with the Pas Palo, uh, using that grass, which you have on some of the tees and on the practice range, uh, at least in the, uh, on, on the driving uh, areas. Um, the, to convert to a Pas Palo course would be at minimum $3 million. And that's $3 million uh, we don't have right now because we're, we're building uh, a, a, a new uh, center across the road here. And if we had not seen what other courses have experienced from celebration, obviously I'd be equally, and I was very skeptical when I, people started reporting values. <coughs> the Island Club just regressed, it only cost $80,000. You know, that type of report, so well, that's impossible. Uh, and that's why a fair amount of study went into it, and uh, we just didn't meet with the uh, superintendent. We conferred with him. We sat him down, chatted with him. Well, yeah, did this happen? Uh, give us experience on this, that, and what have you. And uh, I know it sounded a little too good to be true, and I'm a little, I was very skeptical myself. But it is true. Uh, other courses have done it. It's not a temporary fix. It's a permanent solution. Does it need to be reseeded? No. The little buggers grow, <laughs> keep on growing. <laughs> Even in cooler weather. Yeah, what you really want to do is try to have the nicest looking golf course and with the highest degree of playability during season. If uh, you want something perfectly green, come on down here in July and go out here. Well, we're not here in July. We're, we're here between November and uh, through the, uh, this month. And so we're, lo we're lo looking to maximize uh, that opportunity uh, with uh, the, starting with the fairway regressing. Uh, we think that will go very well. And uh, if that does go well, we will consider the, the other rough areas. The other good thing is, no matter how hard you try, you can't kill off 119. That's the grass that's on the golf course now. And that blends very well with 
the celebration, you really can't tell a, a great difference. Uh, the celebration looks a little hardier, it's got a wider leaf to it, and things like that. Yes, sir? Does that mean it's going to be brown in the summer? Does that mean the golf course is going to be brown this summer? Yeah. Yes, you will have increased roll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, during the herbicide treatments, the, uh, the uh, three uh, uh, applications, it will brown the fairways, not the rust. How many rounds of golf do we have in our course? Yes, you have, uh, last year uh, you had 29,760. Funny you should ask that. I just we collect a lot of information on the golf course, so and that's up considerably. If you go back three years, <coughs> and that includes members and guests, and that includes nine holes and eighteen holes, uh, you are running twenty six five. So this this year, I think for uh, you probably go over the thirty thirty thousand. Yes, sir. Over the years, I think the, the uh, pursuit of good grass fairways has, to me, like Indiana Jones chasing the Holy Grail. We, we keep spending money and we keep trying to uh, improve it. And um, my comments are not in opposition to what we're doing. But has the committee given or had discussions with the Gulf Committee or whomever uh, to try and deal with what I believe is the fundamental? problem which stems from our Eagle Creek members maybe were lousy at geometry at school but nobody seems to adhere to the 90 degree rule. So what we have is an enormous number of rounds each day with carts going down the middle of virtually 15 <coughs> down the green going down the middle of the fairway and that flattens the grass out. And then we all complain about the fact that the ball is not sitting up and maybe we need grass or better grass or something like that. Now over the years Venturi closed certain holes down at certain times. Uh, there were other attempts made to try and minimize people uh, just driving straight down the center of the uh, fairway. Well I think there are all those runners. <laughs> but I agree with you 100%. Um, I, I've noticed uh, just in preparation of this, I uh, spent some time watching people tee off on one and watching them go to the preserve. But I was amazed the number of people, as soon as they tee off, turned left, I guess, left, right at the beginning of the fairway and went down the middle. Um, we, you may have noticed in recent weeks we've had stakes there now. But uh, that is a good point. Uh, the uh, the wear and tear from excessive cart uh, traffic, obviously flattened grass, you, you put your brakes on, uh, you'll, you'll start to get ridges in, in the, uh, the golf course. But I do think that the, uh, the real issue is the grass itself. Um, it does not perform well when we want it to perform. And, uh, I think the policing of the golf course in terms of uh, uh, trying to convince people to observe the 90 uh, degree rule is something that, uh, yeah, that's something the golf committee will have to work on. Yes? Now, now the design of the starting around 15 of the colleagues, it looks really good. It's pretty useful to have that around those trees. But the approach to 15 is kind of patchwork. You know? Is it settled out over time? Well, well the, the question is, uh, the approach on 15 has the diamond zoysia uh, that was put in in soft form there. Uh, it, it's bumpy, it's still bumpy. Um, I think there are a couple of reasons for it. First, it was a very fast installation. Could have been done a little better. And uh, Jimmy, you can throw a Coke bottle at me or, or what have you. Uh, but, I think that was the issue. Um, yeah, it does take time to settle down. But yet on the collar, it settled beautifully. It was a better job on the collar than on the approach. 
Uh, I think that will settle down. Uh, if not, we'll tear it up and uh, resettle it. No, I know this concept you've been talking about.